Disturbed by the recent incessant killings in parts of Southern Kaduna, thousands of women on Thursday took to the streets naked to register their displeasure over alleged attempts to eliminate them from their ancestral lands. Some of the protesting women wore black clothes with patches of black all over their bodies in a protest that terminated at the palace of the paramount ruler of Atiyab in Zangon Kataf local government area of Kaduna state. Recently, there have been killings in Zangon Kataf and Kauda local government areas by suspected Fulani militias, resulting in the loss of lives, burning of houses, foodstuffs and rustling of animals. The protesting women noted that the continued killings have taken away their breadwinners, parents, sisters, brothers, husbands and children, stressing that the majority of them are widows, widowers and orphans. The women who beside protesting naked cried and rolled on the ground, demanding justice for their loved ones who have been killed and maimed, as well as the burning of their houses and the destruction of their sources of livelihood. Honorable John Aseke, President of Southern Kaduna People's Union, joins us now for a look at this development. Thank you very much for joining us on the news. Thank you. This rather strange, if you like, how relevant is this symbolic outcry of the Southern Kaduna women? Well, uh, symbolically and uh, culturally too, uh, when a woman, not just a woman, a mother, uh, decides to go naked to protest a situation, it is the extremity of the gravity of the situation and the frustration that comes with it. Uh, the woman is the mother of the nation. The woman is the mother of everybody, whether you are president, whether you are governor, whether you are... Uh, a member of the house, that, that is a mother of everybody. And when a, a woman in frustration of a situation decides to go naked, that is to display the extremity of the situation. Do you and believe that, that the government got the strong message intended by these women? And has there been any response since the protest? Well, the protest was to the paramount ruler and... Uh, what they in, uh, expected is that the paramount ruler should take their message to the authorities, the governor and the president and whoever that may help to intervene in the situation that has become the incessant massacre of the people in those areas and uh, without any help coming from anywhere. What triggered this particular uh, protest, do you know? Uh, we know that there's been concerns, consistent concerns. Was there a particular incident that triggered this? And how did these women pull themselves together to, you know, acquire such a crowd to uh, carry out the protest? Well, uh, the protest, I think, was spontaneous. Uh, we were not even aware. I think it was just a spontaneous reaction. It was not even planned. If it was planned, it would have been hundreds of thousands of people. And uh, it, uh, it was triggered by the recent killings in communities in uh, Zangwan uh, local government. Uh, first, it was in a town, a community. Hello, uh, Mr. Asake, can you hear us? Called uh, Zangwan uh, where 27 people were killed and uh, houses were destroyed by the Fulani militia. And uh, nothing has been done about it, despite the fact that the communities or the local governments of Zangon Katev and Kauru were under 24 hours curfew. And up to this time, I'm talking, running eight weeks now, those areas have been under 24 hours curfew imposed by the governor of Kaduna State, Governor Nasuru Erufai. Now, the perpetrators of these crimes have not been apprehended. Nobody is going after them. When they come, they kill, they destroy, they rape and abduct some into the bushes, and nobody goes after them. 
only the communities are displaced to nearby communities. Uh, well, not even let, an, I, not now. Even an uh, IDP camp is set up for them. Honorable, sorry to interrupt you, but let's talk solutions now. Uh, what do you think, what kind of actions do you expect to see from the government as at least a first step to trying to address the issues that are consistently being raised by these communities? If you can put that in one minute, I'll be appreci it will be appreciated. To show sincerity, most of these communities that have been displaced, not only in Zamkong Katab, not only in Jamaa, but across all the local governments of Southern Kaduna State. And most of these communities have been taken over by the same people that invaded those communities and killed them and destroyed their property. Now, the first step is government to show commitment, sincerity, and eject those people that have occupied these communities and return the original uh, 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 people to their ancestral lands and resettle them and rehabilitate them and then apprehend those criminals and bring them to justice. That is the first step. Second step is that the government should assist these communities to keep vigilantes around the communities to be able to step up further attacks. All if right. this is done, then we will know that the government is really I mean, genuinely committed to finding a lasting solution. At least we cannot um, give up on hope. Hope is uh, something we hold on to. Let's hope that this effort by these women will get some attention from the government. Thank you very much, Honorable John Asake. Thank you.